There's nothing like being on the water in Maine. But under these waters lies what some have called the worst natural disaster Maine has ever faced. This is milfoil, one of the invasive aquatic plants that now infest about 30 Maine waters. Here on the lower Songo River in Naples, it's like a thick green net under the water. Once the upper river looked much the same, but not today, ten years after Maine's battle against invasive aquatic plants began. So what's so bad about milfoil? If you let it get in the door, it's going gonna, it's gonna to completely take over. The Lakes Environmental Association is a nonprofit in Bridgeton that's been protecting watersheds and water quality in the Lakes region since 1970. It was about a decade ago that LEA and Maine's other lake associations realized that invasive aquatic plants could alter the character of Maine's lakes forever. It doesn't have the normal limiting characteristics that a, that a native plant would. It pretty much will go into almost any environment. Let's say the Sango River, it'll grow pretty much everywhere, whereas if you look at native species, they have their, their likes and dislikes. Um, and it outcompetes the native species. So it, it not only does it have a, a broader range within a water body, but it also is much more um, aggressive. And it has some very remarkable tools for propagation. It's either through seeds or it actually auto-fragments twice a year and breaks up into little pieces that be root and become new plants. Well, you really can't swim through the dense stuff. I mean, you're, 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 you're trying to keep your hands out in front of you and spread the, the stalks apart as you go through. It creates an environment that's fairly hostile towards motorboats. Well, I remember when I was a kid, we used to try and take the motorboat up into the lily pads, and pretty soon your prop gets jammed up and your shear pin breaks, and then you're paddling out of the lily pads. And, and I think the same thing applies with milfoil. You, you really can't run a motor through it very well. It's not a great thing to do anyway, because it just spreads it all the more, but it, it's also incredibly ugly looking and it really reduces habitat for many many of the species that are relying on native plants. I think everybody pretty much learned about this at the same time. I mm -hmm. think the the legislators, the landowners, the municipal officials and the state agencies were all pretty much clued in. I think it started um, really on a broad scale with the with the institution of the Maine Milfoil Summit mm -hmm. and that brought in all of those parties and uh, created kind of a forum and an information sharing um, opportunity for everyone. Uh, Rich Thompson, who is a state rep from Naples, worked with us to introduce uh, legislation to essentially make the transportation illegal. The next bill was the kind of omnibus bill. Howard Corwin from the Greater Level Land Trust was a, was a major instigator in the program mm -hmm. and LEA, uh, Shipwright from the Maine Lakes Conservancy Institute, and Maggie Shannon from COLA were, I think, the prime movers. It was really exciting because it was a long, uh, kind of hard-fought battle. We had um, just very little understanding and support to begin with, but that rapidly changed. There's a rising tide of, of unanimity uh, that says we, we need to deal with this and deal with it effectively and, and deal with it now. The Senate was um, overwhelmingly in favor of the bill, but the, the House was a pretty much a knockdown, drag out fight. $10 fee for, for Maine residents, a $20 fee for our out of state visitors. But it's more than just buying a sticker, it's investing in a whole program to fight hard to keep milfoil and other invasive plants out of Maine lakes. What really sold the program, I think, was a, a pretty massive uh, public uh, turnout in terms of uh, letters and phone calls to legislators and a lot of publicity, uh, public relations. Yeah, John Martin played a very interesting role. He came in, uh, um, I think, as a very uh, staunch supporter. He was really out there kind of prodding to get people's juices flowing, and he, and he certainly did. The bill passed the House by only one vote. It brought in the, the funding source, uh, the sticker program. It teamed up uh, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife with DEP. Uh, it also beefed up the laws and the penalties. So mm -hmm. it was really a pretty holistic approach and um, very unchanged since then, which, which I think is a, a testament to the fact that it was pretty well designed.